Hi, my name is Anne Carl and I'm a design team member for LuluArt 2017. Today I'm going to share with you how I created my journal page titled Live a Life Inspired. I start by sketching my design on the 300 GSM Strathmore mixed media paper. I find it holds up really well to both wet and dry mixed media. My favourite pencil for sketching would be a, a Pacer pencil, 0.7 and a 2B. I sketch lightly, trying not to score the paper before removing my guidelines with an eraser. I like to use both watercolour pencils and acrylic paint for a nice smooth look. I start by building up a layer of the watercoloured pencil in the shaded areas of her face and body. Firstly I apply thin coats of the acrylic paint in the areas without the pencil and while this is still wet I then blend the outer edges inward to completely fill the shape. I dry this layer off before reapplying the same watercolour pencil. This time round I add a deeper colour to the darkest areas before blending it all together with another coat of paint. I build soft highlights by applying several layers of a mix of the flesh tone and the gesso. I finally tie this all together by adding a wash of colour over the shaded areas. I need this layer to remain transparent to allow the other colours to peek through. I continue using this colour to build depth around the facial features. I like to use the circle stencils to ensure my irises and pupils are round. I then fill the iris with a coat of turquoise and shade the left side with a darker shade of blue. I add a layer of white gesso to the whites of the eyes and fill the pupils with black before adding some detailed with the Prisma pencils. I add a cast shadow under the eyelids by smudging the 2B pencil with the blending stump. I fill in the lips with a brush mix of fuchsia and gesso, keeping the top lip a couple of shades darker always. Time for the cheeks. I start dry brushing with a soft pink, pulling the colour under her eyes and then deepening the edges with the lip colour and I'm also adding touches of the pink to her neck and forehead. I add some additional colour to the lips with a sharp watercolour pencil before blending it in with a touch of water. While this is still wet, I add highlights to the lips and eyes with gesso. I crisp up my lines with a sharpened watercolour pencil before leaving the face and moving on to the teddy bear. I outline the bear before erasing any existing lines and redraw his eyes using the circle stencil. 
I now shade in the darkest areas as I did with the face and I blend this all together with a thin coat of paint. I add a wash of colour in his darkest areas and around his little facial features just to make them pop. Continuing with the same processes, I shade his muzzle and fill it in with a thin coat of paint. I give his eyes a quick paint of gesso and then I fill in the pupils with black. Using the same colour, I then create a stitched little nose and facial details. Continuing with the same colours I've already used in the face, I fill in the bear's ears with the turquoise and I shade in the darker blue. I also add touches of this blue to the bottom of his muzzle before adding the nice soft pink to his cheeks. I add a little bit of white gesso to make his little muzzle rounder and highlight his nose and then I use the black to add the stitches. Continuing my quest to make my flat little teddy bear become rounder, I'll use my watercolour pencils again to just add some more shade and make the darkest places look darker with my watercolour pencils. Working sections at a time, I apply a thin layer of water to the background before rubbing in patches of my colour. Once completed, I blend it all together with an additional layer of water and a nice light pink watercolour pencil just to tie it all together. Next I selected a fine stencil and completely covered the background with a mix of turquoise and gesso. Using the same background colour, I chip in around the girl and the bear. I feel the background may be a little bit too bright, so I lightly sponge over it with a coat of gesso. I've chosen a nice dark red for a hair colour, just to give the whole picture a bit of a pop. I've added a bit of black to the paint, just to get a bit of contrast happening, just a bit of shaded area, and I'll also go back and forth between a couple of watercolour pencils until I'm happy with the look. I'm wanting her to stand out a little bit more from the page, so I'm going to add a float of the darkest blue around her and the teddy bear. I've popped back now to her eyes and I've picked up my 10-0 fine liner and some nice fluid black paint. So I'm just pulling in her eyelashes here, always starting from the eye and pulling outward. Just using the gesso again to add a few highlights to her eyes. Put a bit of sparkle in her life. Now that my background shade colour is in, I can add some wispy hairs to her and a few more highlights, just mixing and picking up different colours from my palette. No teddy's complete without a little heart button, so I've cheated here a little bit and used a stencil. I'm adding some cotton threads just using that 10-0 liner again and a mix of the light blue turquoise and the white. I know I want to use this particular stamp and I only want to use the bottom half so that's all I ink up. Now I also have to be careful of positioning because I don't want it to cover any part of the teddy bear. So what I've done is I've actually stamped it onto a piece of tracing paper first, looked at the positioning and I've used a guide there to make sure that I get it exactly in the correct spot. I've used the Blazing Red Stays On ink pad and if I work very quickly I'm able to put on the Tim Holtz Distress Powder. I just very quickly dust it off, I heat it up and because it's the distress embossing particles actually will fall away and reveal that beautiful red ink underneath. 
I'm really happy with the way it's turned out so I've decided that I really need to put a little bit of more of this embossing powder around my picture just to frame it. So again I've used the red ink working quickly while the ink is still wet I've put the embossing powder on flipped it off, heated it up and then with my finger very lightly just rubbed those other portions off. Having it stamped on that tracing paper just allows me to trial it before I actually commit to it. I fill in the open sections of the stamp with a white Posco pen. I work in small sections of a time because I use my water brush to soften it off because I want that beautiful background to peek through. It's lacking a bit of colour down around her shoulders so I use the pink that I used for the cheeks and I just paint her a little shirt. Because I've done this I've also added a few little crisscrosses within the teddy bear's ears. Using the darkest blue from the background I apply a little eyeshadow and then I continue to add touches in the darkest shade areas within her hair around the stamped image. Now I'm just applying very soft washes of colour. I can go back two or three times to build up the intensity if I feel it needs it. This blue colour is just tying my whole design together. I'm feeling really happy with my journal page so I now set about adding my final highlights. I use my fine point black micron pen just to finish off those darkest areas. It's been a pleasure sharing my processes with you today. Be sure to pop over to luluart.com.au for all your art supplies.